Jeremy S. Cook here, and today I'll be going over how to make a 3D printed pod. What we have here is actually made from a 3D printed mold, and there's a banyan tree on top that I, I planted, or tree, I guess pretty small for a tree, but it look, looks pretty good with the, the rocks and everything on there. You can see the sides, it's got a really unique look, and there's a drainage hole on the bottom like a traditional pot. Here's a little close-up view of the side here. You can see it has kind of a, a nice little textured look to it, different than you see in most pots that you, you buy from Home Depot or Lowe's. Anyway, if you want to make it one yourself, just follow along. So first thing, of course, was to do a little experiment. I, I tried to measure everything out pretty carefully here, but I tried to get the ratio of water to concrete correct. As it went on and on, I just realized that I just needed to have it pretty much the consistency of pancake batter, as somebody else said. But for now, I thought I'd measure it out nice and, nice and precisely on my little scale. You can see it just bubbling up just a little bit. And then you gotta mix it up. I'm using some wood scrap from a project that I was never really that happy with, so I never really showed it off. But yeah, you can see I'm just mixing and mixing, had to turn the thing around quite a bit. It's a lot more work than I anticipated. But with that done, and a couple days later, just like that, it was dry. And it's, uh, yeah, pretty, pretty useless. I guess you could use it as a boat anchor or something. But for this project, you probably wanted something a little bit more interesting. So what I have here is the square design of my first iteration of this pot. Now, I'll, I'll warn you right now that this did not work. So if you feel like forwarding, fast forwarding ahead to the cylindr cylindrical part, I would totally understand. But the thing I learned in this part is that, first of all, you need to have a draft angle on this. So instead of extruding the outside and the inside straight, you need to use put a draft angle on that, which, which just makes it uh, compress a little bit as it goes down or, or or widen depending on what how you put the angle my idea was that I could have four drainage holes in the bottom that would support the inside and then studs on the outside that would, would poke up and just seal it seemed like a good idea at the time but maybe there's a reason over the thousands year of years of development of pots that they don't actually make them this way I thought you know in my first try at this why not just make something totally different that, that'll totally work right well as I said, it did not quite work, but it is a kind of a neat design. Even did a little section analysis here, which is a nice tool in Fusion 360 where you can just look into it as if you were, well, looking through a section of it. Looks like it'll made up nicely. Even put some holding tabs on it, so in theory, I could just grab it and pull it out. Oh, and also got to put my initials in there. Had to do that inverted or mirrored, I suppose. That, that didn't work at all, and even at the time, I thought that was a little bit ambitious. But with that done, I printed out, there is the inside with the holes in it, and then the outside has these little studs on it that'll, that'll connect to. It did take a decent amount of figuring out how to, how to get this all correct, even to that point. So the other thing I did, which I thought I needed to do, was I made a strainer for everything to keep the aggregate out of it. Now, as it turns out, this was just not even, I didn't even need to do this, but you know, I made a small one with the, the round holes and the larger one with the square holes later. I don't know where that video of the square holes is, but it doesn't really matter. You don't need to make one, although it is on the GitHub that will list in this with, along with the rest of the files for this project. And for that matter, if you want to know more about this and more specifics of how I did it, there's an article on popular science or popsci.com that you can check out. I'll put the link in the description. But again, I'll note that what you're seeing here is not exactly what's there because there was a lot of development process along the way. I suppose you can consider this first part kind of a behind the scenes look at what, what goes into developing something fairly new. I, at this point, I was still trying to sift everything together and measuring everything carefully. Again, that wasn't really necessary, but yeah, it worked okay, I guess. Mix that up there. I, I, you know, it's, it's really really hard mixing this stuff together, harder than you'd think. I almost get the impression that the aggregate helps it mix together. I, I don't know that for sure. I, I have no idea what aggregate actually does. So if you're a civil engineer or just happen to know, feel free to let me know in the comments. But with that done, with that somewhat mixed up, I poured that on the bottom and then put the put the middle part in. At this point, I could tell that perhaps this is once something that I'd want to do over and over and over. But yeah, it was a learning experience. 
had to, to vibrate it quite a bit with a r orbital sander. Although you could use pretty much any tool, any sort of vibrating tool you want, I would suppose. But that helped get some of the bubbles out and I could pack more concrete into it. From there I put a, a cup in the middle to weight everything down. And the idea was that, you know, I, the next morning or in two days I could just take this out and it'd be great. Yeah, that, that didn't didn't work whatsoever. It was very frustrating. Even hammering it lightly and then hard, that didn't work. And, I, you know, thinking about this later, I guess if I just left the 3D printed part on there, I, I would have a legitimate pot. But, you know, what's what's the fun in that? I was still holding out some hope that I, uh, I'd i have a something that I could use. But once I did that, I knew that it was just pretty much pretty much trash. Yeah, that's that's not good at all. But nonetheless, I kept kept working at it. Cut my fingers somehow. More chisel work, Dremel tool work. Uh, you know, maybe the maybe the bottom will be salvageable. Who knows? Ah, uh, uh. nope. And that's that's pretty much it. So that was absolutely trash at that point. My next try, of course, was the cylindrical design that I mentioned earlier. This still has a draft angle on it, but the outside has a spine on it so that it can be attached with, with binder clips. And then when it's done drying, you just take it off. Just take the binder clips off and take it off. Bottom has a flange on it that attaches to the top. Uh, well, the fl top has a flange as well. So everything everything attaches via binder clips. These are great tools. I, I guess they're used for 3D printers, uh, 3D printed molds, uh, even, even attaching papers together, I, I would suppose. You also might note the, the nub on top, which was really important for actually knocking it out later. There it is printing. I printed this in kind of a tandem arrangement so that everything could be printed in one piece. So not a new new technique, I don't think, but stacking this stuff is a new new technique for me, at least. Then there was, of course, the mixing and shaking and, and all that stuff. And then after that, I used this Vaseline petroleum jelly to just coat the inside of this, especially, and, and the outside as well. That was uh, that worked a lot better than cooking spray, and I would absolutely recommend it. I think I think it's really cheap if you buy it buy the big jars. With that properly petroleumed, if that's a word, I attach the, the binder clips on as alluded to earlier, and there's one for the spine. A couple more would keep that tight enough that not too much not too much concrete would leak out. Even here, I could tell that the design was a little bit better because. It's so much easier to pour this concrete in. I, I think I learned a little bit more about actually mixing the concrete, putting enough water in. But after that, it was time to, to vibrate it with this rotary tool or this orbital sander. Any sort of vibratory tool would probably work. And after that, I scraped it off with the with the wooden mixer. Really, really peaceful after that violent mixing. <laughs> so after some time had passed, it was the moment of truth. I took all the binder clips off and the outside came off so nicely that was great turned it upside down and, and you can see that the concrete isn't entirely cured yet and that's a bit of a problem pounded that down by the nub on the top and you can see in just a minute the flange piece came off and then the inside is kind of cracked too in fact after all this the the whole thing disintegrated so it was eventually back to the drawing board i made a new print of everything with a little bit different angles i believe and some different yeah, you know, just just some different features, and then the outside was yellow, which is just the PLA that I had in my printer. The trick here, though, was to use this stuff called XTC 3D, which is meant to smooth prints out. So thanks for Jay at Tampa Hackerspace for giving me the tip on this. Mix that together, and then it just goes on. I, I won't say that it entirely fixes it, but it's it's pretty, it's definitely a lot smoother than when it started. So I would recommend this stuff if you want, well, smooth prints, and, and who doesn't? Coated everything on the inside. I'm not sure how much I did the outside because that doesn't really matter that much as far as getting it out. And then I thought I'd give you yet one more look at how the vibration goes. This is with the aggregate in it, so it's a little bit different. Add a little bit more aggregate and then everything just falls into the place. I, I thought that was so cool just the way, it, the way it looks. Just bubbling up and falling into place. Then you gotta scrape the excess off and add a little bit more. Looking pretty good. Add just a little bit more. And a little bit more of that. So, after all that, let it dry for a 
couple days and time to get that out. Now one thing you might note here is that I actually took the outside, the process I developed, you take the outside off after about a day and let the outside cure and then after another day you, you pound the inside out. And look at that, it looks, looks really beautiful. Now to make it even more beautiful, I put this sealer compound on it, which, I mean, look at that, that looks, that looks awesome. Now, of course you need something to go inside your plant potter, pot, planter, anyway, your flower pot. So, I got these stones from the sea and the, the beach at Dunedin, Florida, where, close to where I live, and also this, um, the mangrove tree on the left. Mix some sand with potting soil and I thought this would work really well and it does make some really good before pictures but well as you'll see in a second this didn't do too well so if there's any botanists or people that just know about how to grow mangroves again let me know in the comments the stones and stuff though it looks looks great i mean look at that that's, that's a beautiful picture there's another one coming up there look it looks pretty good there maybe a little bit wilted and then this one yeah that's a bad surprise on the right, though, is a banyan plant that did quite a bit better. That pot's also showing off the option to have a spray painted outside. So you can just spray paint it and then put some sealer on. And it looks pretty good that way, too. There I am harvesting my other banyan plant to make to make room for this one. Hopefully it's still surviving. I gave this away as a gift. So you put that in the middle and then put water on. I'm not really much of a gardener, so as far as growing this kind of thing, you're on your own. As far as making that pot though, I think I presented hopefully a good recipe. Again, it's available in GitHub and on that PopSci article, so check either of those out. Another thing, my son actually painted this with a paint pen, put some fish on it, and then we I sealed it up afterwards. That looks really good. I was not surprised at how good the art was. I, I think it's great, but just how well it popped, that paint pen is really looking good in orange, I think. So. Yeah, hopefully you enjoyed the video. I got a few other things coming up, including this concrete solder squid that I, yeah, I'm working on there, but it is complete. And then I got something else that I'm is not complete, and you can draw your own conclusions as to what that is. this is. So, I hope you enjoyed the video. If you did, give it a thumbs up, or even consider subscribing. And if you want notifications, you just have to hit the notification button, and then hit the all and then you know if, if you're watching this in the future i imagine they'll just expand this maybe you've got to you know give a blood sample or something or enter a captcha i mean if that's the case maybe maybe you don't do that maybe you just check back sometime so either way i uh hope you had a good time watching this and thanks so much for watching this is jeremy s cook signing off